my friend. I have a very exciting review for you. It is the Sydney Grace and Mel Thompson eyeshadow palette called Tiny Marvels. I am so excited to show this to you. I've got a lot to say about this. I've got, I've got some things to say. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to know everything you need to know before you purchase this palette, hang tight. I'm about to break it down for you right about now. First of all, thank you so much to Mel and Sydney Grace for sending this over for a review. I had this a few days before Mel announced it and I was like, when's she going to announce it? When's she going to announce it? When's she going to announce it? And I'm like waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and finally she announced it. So finally I get to review this for you. But the good thing about me getting it early is that I got to play with it a little early. I got to really try a bunch of different looks with it and kind of play with it and figure out what I thought of it. So I have a lot to share with you. Hello, editing Jen here. Sorry you interrupted. I realized I forgot to add one piece and that is my relationship with the influencer. So whenever there's an influencer created brand or a collab, I like to talk about if I have any relationship with that person. I have talked to Mel privately through DM a few times. We have a lot of mutual friends, but we don't know each other very well. We're both subscribed to each other's channels, but I wouldn't say that we're close friends or anything. Uh, I think she is an absolutely lovely person, but we don't have a personal close relationship. So I just wanted to disclose that really quickly. And now back to the video. Let's go ahead and jump right in. This is only available at Sydney Grace's website and it is currently on back order slash pre-order. The original amount of palettes that they created sold out, but you can order it and I'm not exactly sure when it'll ship, but they are making more. This palette is made in the United States, but it is not on the packaging, which I thought was really strange because I very rarely see a product without that on there. And I think technically it's supposed to be on there, but it's not. Most important thing you need to know is that it is made in the USA. The shelf life listed on this is 18 months, which is a decent amount for an eyeshadow palette. One request that I got about when I talk about cruelty-free status is to say whether it is a self-proclaimed cruelty-free brand, meaning that the company just makes that statement, or they have a specific bunny from a specific company that certifies that they are cruelty-free. Sydney Grace is one of those that self-proclaims cruelty-free, which really isn't that much different than getting a PETA bunny because they don't really require a whole lot. If they were Leaping Bunny certified, it costs a fee and there's a big process to go through, which is kind of the gold standard of cruelty-free products. There's really no reason for a United States made independent beauty brand to not be cruelty-free. They don't need to test their final products on animals for US regulations, as long as they're not importing to be sold in China, which 99%, if not 100% of all independent beauty brands in the US uh, don't do that. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be cruelty free. This does appear to be a vegan palette. I did not see carmine or any other animal products in the ingredient list. And one thing I want to note is the ingredient list on the back is ginormous. Thank you. <laughs> to Sydney Grace for doing that so I can actually read it. It's quite helpful. I'm not sure if it needed to be that big, but being bigger is better than being so tiny that I need to actually take a photo of it and zoom in like I do with a lot of ingredient lists. For brand controversies, I legit couldn't find anything. Ah. Uh... I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find anything on Mel. I couldn't find anything on Sydney Grace. So well done. <laughs> Let's talk about value for a bit. This is a $52 eyeshadow palette for 30 grams. You do get 15 shadows, so that would be two grams per pan. Personally, I really like to see at least one gram per pan because that gives you a good amount of product in order to try it. So two grams per pan is absolutely fabulous. So when we're talking about value here, it is $1.73 per gram. Anything under the $2 mark for me is very inexpensive, especially for a high quality product. There 
there are some drugstore brands, the ones that have the little itty bitty pans that are well over $2 per gram. If you're going by per pan value, they're $3.47 per pan, which for a Sydney Gray Shadow is very, very inexpensive. And especially since they are US made, which is much more expensive to produce. Just a little bit more about ordering for these. On the ordering page, it says they offer a 100% money back guarantee within seven days, and they do offer international shipping. The rates are calculated at checkout. Let's talk a little bit about the packaging. Oh my gosh, how gorgeous is this artwork? I think it is absolutely gorgeous. Maybe I'm biased because I am married to a tattoo artist, but I think this is beautiful. And it was designed by Mel's tattoo artist in Tennessee. His name is Pat Bennett and he works at Red Nimbus Tattoo Club and it's gorgeous and it fits Mel so well, obviously. I mean, she has tons of tattoos. She's really into bugs. She talks about in her launch video how she has bugs tattooed all over her body and it's just her thing. So I think that the artwork matches so beautifully. And she said that he did take the colors that are in the palette and then incorporated them into the artwork, which I think is really cool. Now, this is a very glossy cardboard packaging. It does have quite a strong magnet, which could be good or not good, depending depending on who you are. See, if you see me kind of pushing, it takes quite a bit of effort for me to pull this open. It is quite difficult, but that means that this is less likely to open in travel. I still recommend putting this in some kind of plastic bag if you're traveling with it, just to make sure something doesn't flick it open, but the magnet is quite strong. So if you do have issues with kind of pulling and getting these things open, um, this, may, this magnet may be a bit strong uh, for you to get open. Time to get geeky with ingredient analysis. One thing I thought was so cool is on the Sydney Grace website, when you go to order this, they actually have all of the ingredients broken down and either the purpose for why they're in there or where they're sourced from and things like that, which I thought was so cool. And one thing that I learned is that there's different types of mica which I didn't know there's actually a couple different types of mica in this palette. Usually it's just listed as mica because they don't have to list it as anything else, but I thought that was really neat. I learned something. Where we go. There is some fractionated coconut oil in this palette. So if you have allergic reaction to coconut products, you definitely don't want to get this. There is no talc in here. So I know some of you are sensitive to talc. So that's really good. I also know some of you are sensitive to a pigment called bismuth oxychloride. That's not in here either. So yay for that. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty standard eyeshadow palette formula. There's nothing that really stood out as being unique other than those things. Um, again, there's no carmine, which means that there's no crushed bugs in here. So I know that will make a lot of people happy that even though it's a tiny marvels palette, they don't put the tiny marvels in the shadows. At this point, my friend, I want to go ahead and show you a demo of how I got this look today. Now, my, my thought here was I'd seen a lot of people play in these colors over here, and I really wanted to play over here and use as many colors as I possibly could. So I kind of went with like a Halloween Beetlejuice kind of look. I, I wanted to really play with those bright colors and get away from the safe, comfortable side and get a little uncomfortable with myself and my, you know, get out of my own comfort zone. So I played with as many colors as I could, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you that right now. Would you stay till the morning light? Or would you follow me? Or would you let it be? If I leave tonight, we could do this right. We'll find the remedy. Or would you stay with me now till the morning light? Before you turn away, I just want you to know that didn't throw your stuff away before you make up your mind that I'm nowhere to find I'm standing right here I know that I told you we're over I swear that I'm sober just listen I miss you and I know that I said all these things but now when you're with her I can see that that you miss
All right, I hope you found that fun and interesting how I got this look today. Now it is time for me to show you some finger and brush swatches, and those are coming at you right now. You and me stuck on the ocean now. Nothing but waves in this villain in. I want to dry up, but you just keep on going, don't you? I don't even know how we got here. All my reasoning have disappeared. I want to bury the hatchet and find the way back to our home, our home, our home. We don't have to drift inside this dome. I will not let us fade away It's not a price I wanna pay And it's not too late No, we lost our purpose Chasing all that surplus You were all that I need I feel that we can break free We can still go back there To a place with no cares We can turn this ship around We can turn this ship around All the way back home Ourselves. Didn't have much, but nevertheless, we were true to each other. But now we don't even bother. I remember you being hopeful, but the tall waves have worn us down. And slowly we are drowning. That's why you need to come with me, with me, with me. Turn around 180 degrees and cross the sea. I will not let us fade away It's not a price I wanna pay And it's not too late No, we lost our purpose Chasing all that surplus You were all that I need I feel that we can break free We can still go back there To a place with no cares We can turn this ship around We can turn this ship around All the way back home All right, now that I've told you everything you need to know, it is time for the wear test. So we will be back in about seven to eight hours and I'll show you how this wore through the day. Like you saw in the demo, I am wearing the Ulta Eye Primer, which is one of my absolute favorites. The formula is very similar to the Urban Decay Primer Potion. So we're gonna talk about how it wore today and how that compares with other times that I've worn it. And, and I'll give you some final thoughts on what I think of this palette. So it'll be quite a few hours for me. Just a second for you, hang tight, it's happening right now. Day is done. Well, since I last saw you, my refrigerator broke and my cat laid a big, huge turd in my bathtub. How was your day? So I decided not to put my fake hair back on because my hair is really frizzy from the humidity here and it just isn't looking right and it's just like, whatever. This is my real hair. Welcome to my evenings. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to check in on the wear time of the Tiny Marvels palette by Sydney Grace. Let me go ahead and take a look and see what I think. Mm. Let's go ahead and have you take a look and see what you think. All right, so this is about seven and a half-ish hours since I put this on. I think it looks pretty stinking good. It is faded just a tiny bit, but I expect that to some level. I expect some level of fainting. Faint, not fainting, fading. It's getting late. <laughs> Point is, is that if I had this on after a full day of work, I would be okay with it looking like this at the end of a work day. All right, final thoughts on this palette. I love Mel, I love Sydney Grace. I'm not surprised that I really love this palette. I am very much enjoying using it. Everything is very easy to work with overall. I do find that the shade Jewel B needs just a little bit more love, a little bit more packing in order to get it to full opacity, but it's really not a huge deal. As far as the usability of this palette, 
and whether I will reach for it. If I want a more mauve toned look, I can definitely see myself reaching for this corner over here. Where I get a little lost personally as a non-makeup artist is on the left side of the palette. I found multiple times when I was trying to use this palette being a little confused about where I wanted to go without sticking to this corner. This corner is very easy. This one is a little bit harder to work with for me personally because I just don't have that artistic vision that Mel does. So what I find myself wanting to do with this is to use this as a supplementary palette with other palettes that I own. I need a gold, I need a purple, I need a, a peach tone, you know, I need a highlight shade, something like that. I can reach for this. I feel like this is a fantastic palette for someone that maybe does a lot of natural looks and wants to try a little bit of color because this will pair well, very, very well with more natural palettes and you just wanna add a pop of color. I told Mel in the comment section under her video that I felt like this was an extremely unique color story. It's very difficult to do that at this point. Pretty much all of the very usable, wearable color stories have been taken. I've seen this palette used on people of many different skin tones and it seems to work very well for many different people, which makes me so, so happy. And I know that that was really important to her. So I'm really glad that she did that. Oh, one more thing about the color story I wanted to mention. A big fail I've seen from a lot of brands recently is doing very, um, all lighter shades or all mid-tone shades. Not a lot of variation in the depth of the shades. I feel like she nailed it here. She's got some deeper shades over here. She's got some really nice mid-tone shades, but she's also put in here some lighter shades and that increases the ability to have a variety of depth within the look and the number of looks you can create with this. You just kind of have to have that eye for color like I was mentioning. So who do I recommend this for? People that want to play in color, especially people that maybe don't want a bright rainbow palette, but wanna try some color. Who I don't recommend this for is for people that just want a grab and go, really easy color story. There are a million of those out there. This is not one of them. This is something that's gonna bring your eyeshadow looks to the next level beyond something very basic. So those are my thoughts on this beautiful Tiny Marvel palette collaboration between Mel Thompson and Sydney Grace. I hope that you enjoyed this review and that you found it helpful. And at this point, my friend, it is your turn in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other to not buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it. I would love to know your thoughts about this palette down in the comments down below. Did you purchase it? Are you enjoying it? Are you planning on purchasing it during the restock? What do you think of what you saw today? I would love to know all of your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up button and you did enjoy the video, please do that. And also if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing that as well before you go so that you don't miss videos of mine in the future. But if you would like to to hang out a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a video for you right down there to watch. But if it's your time to go, it's no problem at all. Thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did. Mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.